Hannah, first, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. And especially because for people like yourself, comedians, comics, Canadian uh, comics, if there's ever a time that we need you folks, it has been for the last two to three years because, wow, the world has been changing and it's different and we need to go to some places to get a good laugh just to forget about what's been going on and we come to your folks so i say to you and the community thank you so much for giving us belly laughs and smiles thank you so much oh my god well thank you for having me i mean this is great it like i said i'm i'm uh really happy to to do this i think that like you know anytime that you can promote Canadian stand-up I think is also really important especially in this country so I mean thank you for for doing your part as well and oh thank me. thank you but you know you just said promoting Canadian comedy you are part of something of a season two that is going on on CBC gem that definitely promotes Canadian comedy for folks who are wondering what is the second season of this great great series yeah, so uh, basically, so it's called uh, The New Wave of Stand Up, and it was recorded uh, with JFL Northwest in Vancouver. And it just features uh, 10 to 12 up and coming Canadian voices just doing 10 minutes each. And it's kind of like everybody gets their own special. So you hear about each artist individually instead of it just being a showcase, which is really cool. So, like, it starts out with me kind of like talking about my life a little bit and like what inspired me and then the set and then like a little bit after so everybody got like a little like comedy special if you can say that so that was fun what do you think it is i want to get to your career in a second though but you know uh i'm of course i'm a little bit older than you <laughs> and i can remember growing up where when it came to canadian comics there were maybe one two three of them wayne and schuster and some other ones but these days, I think we have a smorgasbord of amazing Canadian comics who have taken over the world. And in fact, what I get a good laugh is when people are of other countries are surprised, mm -hmm. you're Canadian? What? Um, how do you see Canadians, how they've grown over the years where, you know, Saturday Night Live, you know, they're featured there and their own comic uh, specials on Netflix and, of course, selling out, uh, you know, arenas around the world. I mean, we've, uh, I think we've really come a long, long way. Yeah. Uh, oh, for sure. And, um, I mean, I think that there's a lot of exposure um, on Canadian comics right now. I think that um, Just for Laughs also does a great job at showcasing Canadian acts because it's like they'll have like three or four different opportunities for people to get on TV throughout the year. And then each year the lineup completely changes. So it's like every year the festival is like turning out really amazing acts. And um, also, yeah, all of my favorite comedians are Canadian. And I think now, especially with like, you know, the internet, I don't think that there's so much of a need for Canadian people to consume uh, so much American content because I think less people are like watching TV it's all like Netflix and like YouTube and stuff so it's like easier to find people that are like in your country and doing something that you like too no oh, absolutely and and like I said I love what I'm I'm seeing too where did the love of comedy come for you when did that all begin um I took a second city I took a course at second city wow. for improv when I was like 14 and it was like fun like I just kind of wanted to do something that was like I don't know I just liked doing goofy things and just like being fun I was like a kid so it was just like a fun thing for me to do and then after the program ended um I don't know I just started doing stand-up like the year after um there wasn't really like a particular reason I guess I just wanted to do something that was like fun and I don't know when, when you're 15, I, it's like I, I was just playing soccer before that, and then I just started doing stand-up, and then I was like, I guess I guess this is it. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And then after a few years, when you've been doing it, you're just like, well, I guess I'm just kind of locked into this now. Like, I don't really see any other option for me. <laughs> so then you just got to continue with it. You know, I've talked to so many 
uh, comics over the years. And mad, mad respect for folks like yourself. And the, one of the biggest reasons why is because um, you have to be so aware of the world, your surroundings, everything's going, everything that's going on. How do you formulate not just things that go on in your personal life, but things that are going on around the world? I've always said, if there's ever somebody who I would never debate is a comedian, because to me, they're way too smart. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I do love comedians. Um, they are truly some of the smartest people that I know. So I, I think you're definitely right in saying that. Uh, but also insane. So it's like, yeah, they're they're smart, but also truly insane. So it kind of, I guess, goes hand in hand a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, my comedy just comes from uh, like moments in, in my life of discomfort and just kind of finding the humor in that. Um, yeah, I guess it just kind of comes down to just like over the years, uh, honing your voice. So like the longer that you do stand up, the easier it is for you to uh, pick up on things. Because like when I first started doing stand up, I was like, oh, I could make a joke about this or I can make a joke about that. <clears throat> but then your set is just kind of like a joke marmalade. Like it doesn't really make uh, the most sense. Whereas like the longer that you've been doing it, the easier it is for you to point out subjects that like, you know, are your voice and you're like comfortable talking about. So it's like, yeah, I guess the longer you've been doing it, the easier it gets in that you know already your sense of humor and how you know you can like spin things i guess whereas like in the earlier days you don't really know that quite yet and and you do it so well too because you do such relatable stories uh i got a chance to see some of your your stuff and uh two things that stood out for me were of course uh your parents getting divorced you you joked about that and also about your friend um, getting engaged and your feelings about, you know, I can't see myself getting engaged. Come on. I, like I said, I think so many people go through these things. Oh yeah, for sure. And, um, yeah, I just like to talk about things that are true to my real life. And then if you can relate to them, then that's great. But yeah, for sure. Like I had a friend that was 22 and got engaged and that was like just insane. And like, she's a great <laughs> friend of mine. I love her, but like, truly that's, objectively insane um so it's just like kind of fun to like talk about those things in like a light-hearted way kind of like poke fun um and yeah does it get tough though to um a not just coming up with your own material but b because the you know the the climate has changed so much and people are so uh politically correct are there things that now where you just kind of go can't touch that, can't do this, can't do that. I mean, are there rules to the game? I don't think that there are rules. Uh, no, I think you can talk about anything as long as uh, you do it right, obviously. There's like a way to joke about something. Context means a lot. Tone of voice means a lot. Uh, the person that whoever is delivering the joke means a lot. Like I could say something and it would sound totally different than if like, you know somebody else said it like a <laughs> russell peters experience in that background yeah exactly like i couldn't tell a russell peters joke and it hit the same way for sure but um yeah i don't think anything is off limits there's certain subjects that i don't talk about because i just don't think that it's conducive to my voice but i don't think that anything is truly off topic i always remember um one of my favorite all time of course was richard Pryor, growing up and one of the things that he always said, and I'd love to see, hear what you think about this. He always said, because a lot of people would say he uses a lot of profanity, the F word, things like that. But he always said this. He never used the F word as the punchline. He used it to tell the story. Yeah. And the punchline was the joke itself. How do you feel about that? Oh, yeah, I think that's that's great. I think that's how it should be done, for sure. I mean, I love hearing people swear on stage. I do it. I think it's I think it's fun to be quite honest uh but yeah as long as it's not the punchline i think that's okay to be honest there are some comedians who do use it as a punchline and i have seen it go over miraculously well somehow but sometimes you can get away with it um depending on you know how likable you are i guess but that's that's not something that i can get away with so uh yeah i'll just use it to like you know 
pepper it up a little bit. I think it's fun, but it's definitely not a punchline for sure. Do you remember your first show? Because I've always said this to folks. In fact, I remember a friend of mine who was a comedian, but he had a chance, actually two friends of mine, not comedians, but they always consider themselves funny people. And they had a chance to do it for the first time. Well, for both of them, it was the first and last time. In fact, one of my friends actually literally tried to get himself drunk so he had an excuse when it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your first time doing it? And for folks who are thinking about this, really, how I think it's a tough job to do. How tough is it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it. you have to be a little bit delusional uh, and a little bit insane to want to get better at it because it truly is an insane thing to want to do. So I, I do think there's a little bit of mental illness that may or may not factor into that. Um, but yeah, the first time uh, that I did stand up, uh, I was 15, so I wasn't really able to get drunk or anything like that. But I brought my mom and my younger brother at the time. And uh, it just went exactly how you would expect it to go. Just like no real punchline, just kind of like this kid talking about, like I talked about school and like my parents and like, you know things like that and kind of like made fun of my mom and my dad and uh and then i just got off stage and i was i just knew that i had to do it again i don't really know how to explain it it's just like i think it's different when you're a kid you just kind of have this romanticized hopefulness of how things are going to turn out in life um so i don't know if it's something that i would have picked up if i was 25 uh but i guess when you're younger you just kind of have that delusional sense of self so i just kind of like went for it but definitely yeah if you're thinking about doing stand-up just like try it once and then if you don't like it then stop doing it and if your friends uh your friends are not going to be supportive for a very long time <laughs> until you start making money and then they will be supportive uh yeah i think it's a it's it's a hard lifestyle, but it is extremely fulfilling if it's something that you genuinely want to do. But if you're bad at it, then you're insane. So don't don't go down that route. You have to you have to be good at it in order for people to not think you're crazy. Well, one thing that does uh, crazy things do happen, hecklers. And I've been on um, TikTok and seen some of uh, how comedians have been dealing with hecklers. Uh, some are real quick to really shoot back. Um, but the bravery of some of these folks who are yelling things out, and there have been one or two of them where people have literally tried to jump on stage uh, on comedians. Have you had situations like this happen? And if so, how did you deal with it? Um, I haven't had anybody try to attack me yet, which is great because I do tend to, if a show is not going well, uh, get hostile with the audience. <laughs> And uh, sometimes that works in my favor. Other times it really turns them against me, uh, which I, well, actually that's not true. I think that honestly hasn't happened yet, but it, it usually works in my favor. I think I do a pretty decent job at trying to control that. But sometimes it's not even heckling. Sometimes it's just body language. Like I hate when I'm on stage and then somebody will just be like wearing track pants with Crocs in <laughs> And they are you serious? Back in their chair. <laughs> yeah, it's like that offends me more than somebody heckling me because it's like, okay, I see that you're trying to be the center of attention. But then when people don't like dress appropriately for the event or <laughs> just are like, uh, like just their body language is off or like disengaged, I think that bothers me more than if somebody was to say something. Because then if you say something, then it gives me an opportunity to like make the show more fun or kind of engage in like a little fun back and forth as long as it doesn't get too escalated. But then when your body language is off and this person's clearly disengaged, it's like very hard for me. It's very distracting for me. Yeah. Um, I don't care where that person would be subway or whatever. They would be completely distracting. Do you ever, I like, I love going to shows, but uh, you know, back in the day I used to have very long braids and when I would go to the shows, I would always sit way in the back because I just knew whoever was on stage would say something to me and I'm just like, I just want to stay in the back. Do you ever just sort of walk and look around at people and I don't want to use the word target, but bring in to the show just because of the way they look or something about them? 
You know what? I don't unless it's like very distracting. Like if there's like a couple that like is making out in the front row <laughs> or like something that they're doing something that is clearly distracting to others around me, then I'll, I'll like address it. But I don't um, make like a huge point of it or anything like that. Like I definitely am like one of those comics that like prefers to like stick to the material as much as possible. But yeah, it's always fun when, when things like that happen. It's kind of like a treat. But I don't try to like make a huge deal of it. See, now my braids are gone, so I can sit up in the front. So I don't <laughs> worry about it anymore. What is the most fulfilling part about you being a comic? What's the most fulfilling part? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I don't really. That's a tough question because the only thing that is truly fulfilling is the friends that you make along the way and these are like lifelong friends that that you make and like truly that is that is the hook of it all is just like meeting other people that have similar life experiences to you that are like funny and fun to be around and are like really good people uh and just like hanging out after shows and talking and that that is truly like the most fulfilling part if i'm being honest and then what is fun is when you get to like write a joke and then it works out on stage and then you get to have like this nice little bit to kind of like take around town. That's all fun. But I think, yeah, the most fulfilling part is probably just like surrounding yourself with like good people and stuff. Well, yeah. like, like I said, we definitely needed you guys during this pandemic because it's been tough and well, it's nice you. to know I that need people like you to report in on it. So thank you for um, having me. Thank you. And congratulations on being part of season two. Uh, any upcoming shows coming up for 2022 for you? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to be at the Big Sound Comedy Festival um, May 14th. So that's a comedy festival that's happening in Perry Sound featuring like so many great Canadian comics. And I'm doing a CBC recording. So tickets haven't sold out yet. Oh, the Big fantastic. Sound Comedy Festival. There you go. Yeah. Fantastic. Congratulations. I hope we can talk soon on your comedy special, which is going to happen at some point in time. Uh, mm -hmm. But either way, though, congrats on this. And again, thank you so much for the laughs. We definitely needed it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.